Welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. I'm the Reverend Mandy Beal. I was on parental leave and I'm happy to be back today. I wanna to make sure to give a thanks to everybody who made that possible, all of our lay leaders and our professional staff. I specifically want to name Teresa Honold who was responsible for coordinating all of the guest worship leaders. I'm very happy to be joined in worship leadership this morning by our co-directors of music ministry, Abha and Stephen Deering, as well as our religious education coordinator, Nico Van Ostrand. We have technical support today from Jane O'Neill and our Zoom greeter this morning is Mary Jo Ebert. We are a Unitarian Universalist congregation located in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Even in our virtual format, we are a thriving community with a place for everyone. Social justice is an essential component of our church life. We are a green sanctuary congregation. We are also a capital W welcoming congregation which means that we are fully attentive to doing the work of including gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and queer individuals and their families. It is in light of that that I also wish you a happy Pride Month. Our worship services are hosted on Zoom every Sunday morning at 1030 and then later posted on Facebook and our website. After the service, we invite you to stay for a virtual coffee hour, especially if you're with us for the first time this morning, we extend a welcome to you. We have two announcements this morning. First, you are invited to join the Humanists of BUC tonight at 7 p.m. Their featured speaker is Dawood Walid, and he will be giving a talk entitled Islamophobia and its Impact. Mr. Walid is executive director of the Michigan chapter on, of the Council on American Islamic Relations. Information for that meeting is on the BUC calendar also. I am taking sermon topic suggestions for next church year. Your ideas, your burning questions can be submitted using the link in the Thursday email. Also, Sarah Constant Takets has graciously invited you to email those to her. All submissions are due by June 30th. Thank you for joining us this morning or whenever you are watching this. Although we are not together physically, we are together in spirit and it is good to be together again. And now our service will begin. Our prelude this morning is from the opera Lacme by Leo Delib. This is the flower duet. <laughs> the connections that keep BUC together, the internet connection, our shared values and faith, the strength of our care for one another. For the people who make up this community, I light the chalice. Our first hymn this morning is Spring Has Now Unwrapped the Flowers, number 6-3.
This morning's opening words are from Margaret Weiss. The church is not a place, it's a people. The church is not only a steeple above the tree-lined streets and cars, rather it is a people proclaiming to the world that we are here for the work of healing and of justice. The church is not walls built stone upon stone held together by mortar, but rather person linked with person linked with person, all ages and genders and abilities, a community built on the foundation of reason, faith, and love. The church is not just a set of doors open on Sunday morning, but the commitment day after day and moment after moment of our hearts creaking open the doors of welcome to the possibility of new experience and radical welcome. The church is not simply a building, a steeple, a pew. The church is the gathering together of all the people and experiences and fear and love and hope in our resilient hearts gathering however we can to stay to the to say to the world welcome come in lay down your heartache and pick up hope and love for the church is us each and every one of us together a beacon of hope to this world that so sorely needs it And the mission of this church is to create a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. The weekly offering serves as an ongoing reminder of this mission. Sharing in this weekly practice of generosity also strengthens the bonds between the congregants and our high purpose. This is separate from your stewardship pledge. This is your weekly checking the box of yes, Yes, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. So let there be an offering in support of this beloved community and our good works. Your contributions can be made through our website, through Venmo, username at B-U-C-M-I. Check in the mail works just fine. However you choose to give, please do so with a heart of gratitude and do so for each other. This week's office. This week's offertory comes to you from BUC's house band, the Sound Messengers, who all miss playing for you. The song is by is Goodness by Sonny Cleveland, a tune I discovered on WDET.
Well, that was a lot of fun. And this is the part of the service that we have set aside for spiritual practices, such as silence, sharing joys and sorrows. Joy is a big part of that. And celebrating the goodness of our community and the goodness of life is something that we really do need to take time for. And I'm glad that we can share that as a religious community. We do pause the recording for the most gracious and loving God, one who gives us bounty and sun. We invite into this space this morning, the mystery of life, the freshness of spring turning to summer. We are full of gratitude for each other and for this community and for this church. We are grateful for the strength that has brought us through this year. We are grateful for the hope that takes us into the next year. Today, we celebrate our flower communion and we meditate on what it is to be individuals who make a community. We meditate on what it is to be growing alive and vibrant. We know in the midst of all this joy and celebration that we also carry with us struggles and heaviness. May the witnessing and the sharing of our lives together bring lightness to those joys and struggles as we share each other's burdens. May it be so with deep gratitude, love and joy. In the name of all things that are holy and good, amen and blessed be. When I breathe in This morning's story for all ages is The Flower Ceremony, a plain and simple beauty adapted from a story by, by Janine K. Groschmeyer in her book, Lamp in Every Corner, Our UU Storybook. In the city of Prague in the land of Czechoslovakia, there was a church. The year was 1923, almost 100 years ago. This church building did not look much like a church. It had no bells, no spires, no stained glass windows. It had no organ to make beautiful music. It didn't even have a piano. It had no carvings of wood or statues of stone. It had no candles or chalices. It had no daffodils. The church did have some things. It had four walls and a ceiling and a floor. It had a door and a few windows. It had some wooden chairs, but that was all plain and simple. Except the church also had people who came to it every Sunday. It had a minister and his name was Norbert Chopik. Wait, Chopik? Hmm, Chopik. I feel like I think I've heard that name around the UC before. Maybe I'll remember by the end of the story. Well, this Norbert Chopik had been the minister at the Plain and Simple Church for two years. Every Sunday, Minister Chopik went to church and he spoke to the people while they listened, sitting quietly and still in those hard wooden chairs. When he was done speaking, the people talked a little bit among themselves and then they went home. And that was all, no music, no candles, no food, not even coffee or donuts. Springtime came in the city of Prague and Norbert Chopik went out for a stroll. The rains had come, the birds were singing and flowers were blooming all over the land. The world was beautiful. Then an idea came to him, simple and clear, plain as day. 
The next Sunday, he asked all the people in the church to bring a flower or a budding branch or even just a twig. Every person was to bring one. What kind, they asked. What color? What size? You choose, he said. Each of you choose what you like. And so on the next Sunday, which was the first day of summer, the people came with flowers of all different colors and sizes and kinds. There were yellow daffodils and red roses. There were white lilies and blue asters, dark eyed pansies and light green leaves. Pink and purple, orange and gold, there were all those colors and more. Flowers filled all the vases and the church wasn't so plain and simple anymore. Minister Chopik spoke to the people while they listened, sitting quiet and still in those hard wooden chairs. These flowers are like ourselves, he said. Different colors and different shapes and different sizes, each needing different kinds of care, but each beautiful, each important and special in its own way. When he was done speaking, the people talked a little bit among themselves, and then they each chose a different flower from the vases before they went home. And that was all. And it was beautiful, plain and simple as the day. And hey, I remembered where I'd heard the name Chopic before. Our very own Chopic Woods at UC was in fact named in honor of the Unitarian minister who celebrated that plain and simple beauty we each bring to church. So well, next time you find yourself there, I hope you think of this story and of all the ways BUC's members embody the spirit of Norbert Chapek's flower reunion. And so we have reached the end of our liturgical year. Another year of church programming has come and gone and it was a year that we spent entirely online. We have faced one or two challenges this year and now is the appointed time to consider how we grew through those challenges. What were the flowers that we brought and what are the flowers that we'll take away? This year, we willed our church into being in unexpected and deeply profound ways. It is tempting to say that technology is what held us together this year, but it wasn't technology, it was tenacity. We are a remarkable community and what we've done, how we've made church this year has been remarkable. BUC was founded by remarkable people who were dedicated enough to liberal religion to bring it home to the suburbs. They wanted to create their own church even though they didn't have a building. They knew that church isn't a building, it's a community. And that's where they wanted their church to be, in their community. And this year, we've been reminded that church isn't a building and we've come to know that community is not limited by geography. Our forebears met in living rooms and this year, so did we. And through this year's challenges, we found new and perhaps deeper appreciation for each other, both as individuals and as a church. We've learned a lot about what it means to be a church without taking it for granted that we'll see each other next week. We haven't had the convenience of casual greetings or the luxury of leaving something unsaid. We've learned the urgency of those expressions of love, those affirmations of belonging to each other. We've had to be intentional about saying those things. And we've gotten good at earnest expressions of care and concern. And we've learned a new vulnerability that will serve us for years to come. Casually going, good morning, didn't cut it this year. And it's not gonna cut it next year. We've learned the value of going deeper. There's a story that's been on my mind throughout this year, 18 months. It has absolutely nothing to do with flowers. And so I hope that you will indulge me. Several decades ago, scientists from many disciplines created an experiment in human living and an artificial environment. They wanted to observe what would happen if you stuck people in an enclosed space and they had no access to outside resources or outside contact. It was called Biosphere 2. 
and they wanted to apply the results of this experiment to plans for a, a future space colony. And what they found that pertains to us today is the trees in certain biomes didn't grow tall enough. They didn't grow the way that they were expected. And the scientists couldn't understand why. The trees, like everything else in the biosphere, had what they needed. They had rich soil, plenty of sunlight and water. And those trees lived. They just didn't thrive. And after the experiment was completed and scientists began sorting through the data, they realized that there was a missing factor. They hadn't taken into full consideration the importance of wind. Trees need to be pushed around by wind in order to grow strong enough to support the weight of being tall. The trees were fine, they just didn't do what they were meant to do. The phenomenon is called stress wood. There are similar processes called tension wood and reaction wood. I don't understand what all of these are. Probably somebody else does. I encourage you to ask them. What I do know is that trees are stronger in the places where they've been under stress from wind or other external forces. The part where they bend over and look funny is stronger than the parts where they go up straight. The lesson here is that trees need to be challenged in order to grow properly to do what they are meant to do. This wisdom is obviously applicable to human life, both individually and collectively. Our growth is accelerated through the experience of adversity. And this year gave us the opportunity for quite a growth spurt, a chance to figure out what it is we're meant to do and the strength to actually do it. This year showed us who we are at our core. Who is BUC without the trappings of a beautiful building? Who are we as a congregation without that ease of casual fellowship? When we were stripped bare, down to our most basic elements, we found grace for each other's shortcomings. We found compassion for each other's heartache. We found a dedication to showing up even when it wasn't convenient or easy. And it turns out that that's what we're good at. That's who we are underneath it all. That's what I'll remember most about this time of challenge. And that is what we're meant to do. That is what we can build on in the time to come. Grace, compassion, dedication. Now, sure, I'll remember the church services and the meetings that went a little weird because of the vagaries of technology, but what I'll remember twice as much are those of you who persevered. I'll remember those of you who showed up to programs, classes, events, worship services using Zoom and all of its issues. You may have been sideways or upside down for a few of those meetings, but you were there. Maybe it was a close-up of your nostril, but you were there. You showed the same commitment to liberal religion that our founders did when they created Birmingham Unitarian Church all those years ago. Today, we are completing an entire church year spent online, something that those forebears could never have imagined. But we did that. We did that. You did that. You have kept our congregation alive and resilient and thriving in the winds of the past year. You tried new things. You probably didn't like it, but you did it. You asked for help. You took care of each other. You did what you had to do to take care of yourself, your friends and our beloved community. That's what got us this far and that's what will continue to help move us forward to be what we're meant to be and to have the strength to do it. It is not technology. It is not ease. It's not a beautiful building. It is us. Our love for each other and our love for our church has outweighed our frustrations and our despair. It is our commitment to each other and to our faith that has given us the fortitude to keep trying and the hope to be patient. We have spent a year and a half in this storm being blown about by the wind and the driving rain. And we're still here, stronger than ever because the work that we've done to overcome the obstacles, the discernment of what we're meant to do and the strength to do it, 
being an active part of this church means something a little more now, doesn't it? Looking around and seeing those same faces week after week, slogging it through, means something more now. It was a stressful year, to be sure, but through the experience of the storm, we grew stress wood and the sub subsequent strength that we need to support growth. This storm did not break us. I don't mean to challenge any forces there, but I don't think anything can break us. I think we just keep getting stronger. And I think that what has happened in this past 18 months has made us ready for whatever comes next. And it is an acknowledgement of the individual contributions that each of us have made toward our church's growth this year, the flowers that we've brought. It's now time for us to celebrate flower communion and to consider the flowers that we are taking away. Today we join with other UU congregations around the world in celebration of flower communion. This ritual is a reflection of our unity and diversity, the goodness of being individuals who make one beloved community. The need to acknowledge our unity is as compelling today as it was at the first flower communion almost 100 years ago. Robert Chapik was a martyr of liberal religion. His conviction that all people have inherent worth and dignity was considered a danger to the Nazi regime, and he was executed in 1942. When we celebrate Flower Communion, we honor his memory and reaffirm our commitment to liberal religious values. We also reaffirm our commitment to each other. Flower Communion is a celebration of our specific beloved community. Each of us is a unique part of the garden that is BUC. And today we celebrate that uniqueness and we take stock of how we've grown over the past year. At its original celebration in Prague, they brought flowers, they took them away. We do the same thing. We bring one flower and we leave with another. And this year we've made signs that answer the question, what's growing in BUC's spiritual garden or what's growing in the BUC community? If you've made signs, please show them to us. If you didn't make a poster, I invite you to hold your hands up in a heart shape. We'll use the spotlight feature to get a closer view. And if you don't want to be shown in the recording, I invite you just to turn your camera off at this time. is what we've grown, what you've grown at BUC this year. These are the seeds that we've sown and we've lovingly tended and we've done that work together. We are truly a blessing to one another and we truly are all growing because of the flowers that we've brought. And we take away more than what we were before we got here. May it be so, amen and blessed be. Our final hymn this morning is The Sweet June Days, number 65. The sweet 
to this world, take with you some of the hope and the joy that you found here this morning. Continue blooming, continue growing, continue encouraging each other in those tasks as well. May it be so. Amen and blessed be.